Hey guys, Mike here. So we're working on some storage shed slabs. We got three of them to put in put in here. We got one done already. That one's 30 by 200. We got another one all formed up. We just got to put the poly and wire to it. This one's 220 by 20. And then there's another one going over there on the other side of that. That's 220 by 20. Uh, stay tuned for the video on this. I'm going to show you how we pour these and how we finish them. Hi guys, so this is going to be how we finish these concrete slabs, uh, in particular this 4400 square foot concrete slab right here. If you want to see the pouring video, I'll have it pop up right up top. You can click on that and go watch us pour this thing first and then come back to this one. Or I'll have the pouring video pop up at the end. So what we're doing right now is, I'm right here right in front of you and I've got float blades on this machine. And I'm doing the first pass, which is float. So I've already hit the whole slab once with these float blades. And I'll show you what these look like real quick. They're just a bigger blade that clip on over the top of the finished blade. Right there, you can see me taking them out of the truck. And so those just slide on over the finished blade and then they clip on. And the reason we use these on the first pass is it just helps level out any little tiny minor humps and dips takes out the bull float lines, fills in any rock holes. Um, you, a lot of guys will use a pan for this too, but we just like these float blades. So I've already hit the entire slab once. I started way up the other end, and that's where we started pouring this slab also. And I'm, now I'm down at the other end here. And now what I'm doing with these float blades is I'm actually hitting this last piece here a second time with the float blades. And the reason I'm doing that is just to... Just to tighten it up a little more, it, it uh, let it dry in between the hits, and then I hit it that second time. And what Luke's doing now is he's coming down with the finish blades. He's way up the other end, and that's dried up enough there so we can start using the finish blades on the concrete. So that's what he's doing. And typically what we'll do is we'll have on a slab like this, we'll have one guy do the floating, the first pass. And then we'll have a second guy do the finish passes. And there's going to be multiple finish passes on this to get it finished right. So sometimes we'll even take a third power trowel off if it's drying really fast, like out in the sun. And we'll have a, a second guy with finish blades and then one guy with full blades. And then, you know, when I get done floating the slab, I can kick off those full blades and I can move on to finish too to help the guys finish this thing. So that's what Luke's doing right now. He's coming down with the finish blades and we do this in sections. You know, we finish it as it dries and it usually dries in a similar way the, the slab is poured. So when you stop pouring, we'll usually stop finishing and then that'll get done before anything else also. But it also depends on the sun, you know, and how warm the sun hits this thing. The, the heat from the sun plays a big part when you're finishing concrete so that's just what we're doing now Luke's coming down into some of this other stuff and he's gonna finish whatever he feels like needs to be finished he'll buzz it real quick with that with the finish blades and then if it feels a little too wet or a little too soft under his feet he'll just you know turn the trowel off and wait a few minutes for it to dry up a little bit more that's kind of what I'm doing on this bottom piece. You know, that's why my trial is just sitting there. I'm waiting for that to dry up a little bit more before I hit it again. And each time you let it dry up some more and you and you hit it with a power trial, it continually gets smoother and smoother. You know, while I'm waiting for mine, you can see I'm stripping off some of those forms. We got another one of these big ones to do way over on the left-hand side. So we'll carry these forms over there. We already did one of these slabs in the middle, as you can see. The one in the middle is 30 by 200. So Luke determined, you know, that was enough. He had to let it sit for a little bit. So he's going to let it sit. And in the meantime, what we're doing is way up on the other end, that part of the slab is already complete. It's already what we call shined out or burnt out. So now what we're doing is we're laying out for the saw cuts. We've got quite a few saw cuts we got to put in this. And what the reason we saw cut slabs like this is to help control the cracking, you know, expansion, contraction. So we'll saw a bunch of relief cuts in this and we're laying them all out. 
We're going to go about every 10 feet down the length of the slab and then we'll put one down the middle. So it'll end up having a bunch of sections that are about 10 by 10. And that really, that should really help control most any type of cracking in this thing. It's pretty important to saw a slab this size, this length, the same day too is what we find. That's why we use a, what's called an early entry saw. It's a soft cut saw that we use from Husqvarna. And I'll, if I can find one, I'll have a link for that down in the description if you guys want to check it out after the video. Once you see us use this thing, it, it's really, it's the way to go when you're sawing uh, concrete floors, concrete slabs, especially this size. You can get all your sawing done the same day and there's no coming back the next day and it, it really improves the controlling of the cracks too when you saw it the same day. So we got it all laid out and the guys are going to snap some chalk lines and then we can, need, we can start sawing up at that end really. I mean there's no reason to wait. If the slab's done, all power trial, you can start your sawing. So my end now is dried up some more, so I'm going to what we call second float this last little piece. I'll get it all second floated. And the reason we, I'm second floating this versus laying it down again is because these slabs, you know, had poly under them. They had a lot of bleed water on them. We had to squeegee off and we try to let that, that bleed water dry up almost a hundred percent if we can that's the best case scenario but sometimes the slab is is firm really firm underneath even though that bleed water is sitting on it so we squeegee off all the water we can we we let it sit as long as we can without letting it get too hard but uh, the surface is still a little moist so you know we get it floated and if we feel like it's just a little too moist for the laydown machine then we'll just hit it with a second float and get that get that concrete all nice and tight before we hit it with a laydown so that's what I determined I had to do on this section and it just makes sometimes it even makes the finish come out even better versus laying it down when it's too early you can see up back way up the other end it looks kind of shiny kind of darker blacker if you want to call it that that means it's done when it does that so here's here's me taking off these float blades and they they kind of clip on over the bars that hold the finished blades so you just pick up the clip slide them off and then you just you know I'll just throw them out over the edge for right now and then I can start using the finished blades on this I'm going to clean up you know any little residual concrete paste that got on those blades I'll just I'll just clean it up off the slab and throw it off instead of trying to work it in with the with the power trial might as well just get rid of it you can see Luke's coming down he's going in a pattern we try to we try to go in a pattern when we finish and then we cross that pattern 90 degrees when we hit it the next time and I'm filling in any little tiny holes any little rock holes or holes left from my feet I'm getting those all filled in and now we're both have finish blades on so we call that laying it down now we're both laying the slab down the finish blades the sun's out it's pretty warm out by now you know this is right around 11 or 12 o'clock right midday and it's if I remember right, it was in the 75 to 80 degree temperatures. So it's not taking long now for this thing to dry. And Darren's got the saw out back there, the soft cut saw. So he's coming down the slab, getting the saw cuts all cut in. And then when we're not, you know, when one of us is not doing, obviously I'm doing my edges right now. Every time we hit the slab, we do our edges, make sure the edges are nice and smooth. We'll be, we'll be taking the forms off of this slab today too and we'll be moving them way over to the left to this next one we got to set up. And when we, when we take the forms off this one we try to set them in the same place they came off for the next slab so we can just put that next one together a lot faster than starting from scratch. You can see Luke's back there 
He's sweeping off some of that some of that dust left from the saw. That it, that saw cuts pretty fast. You can see the sun coming in and out from behind the clouds. So we didn't give this this section down here very long before we decide to hit it again. If you wait too long, then you won't get a really nice finish on it. It'll look kind of rough from the from the finish, you know, pass before. You won't get out all the power trial marks. And it just won't look as good. So, you know, you got to stay right on top of it when it's in the sun like this. It'll only be a, a few minutes in between hits, probably. So this section now is getting finished up. So we'll be able to, once we hit this with the finish blades, we'll be able to mark this section out, snap our chalk lines, and get some saw cuts going down here. So for you guys that have, that have made it this far in the video, um, I got a giveaway I'm going to do at the end of the video. And in order for you guys to be eligible for the giveaway, you, you only got to do a couple things. The giveaway is going to be some of my merch. You know, the, the shirts and sweatshirts I have that you can see down, you know, if you're on a if you're on a PC, you can see the merch show up down at the bottom of the video. But if, if not, I'm going to give away some everything about concrete t-shirts and sweatshirts. So... The only thing you need to do to qualify for the giveaway is, you know, you got to like the video and you got to be a subscriber. So you got to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And then the only other thing you got to do is you got to you got to share it. So you can share it either, you know, you can text the video to somebody, you can share it through an email, or uh, you can share it on your social media. And then the one last thing you got to do is if if you have an Instagram account, you know, I'd like to see you share it on your Instagram, but also subscribe, subscribe to my Instagram. So I'll have that pop up so you know what my Instagram address is. It's basically just at everything about concrete. And then I'll, I'll choose a winner. I'll wait, I'll let this go a week and then I'll choose a winner and then I'll contact you and we'll get that, that merchandise shipped out. So what Darren's doing now is he's coming down with the last pass with the saw on the middle joint and then he's got some cross ones he's got to do. You can see me and Luke way over there to the left in the back we're carrying that for him. So Darren's going to get those cross pieces. He's got a couple more of those to do. We'll get the dust out of his way. And then we can, we can load this stuff up. And then we can start forming up on the other one over there. It's quite a process to form one of these. There's probably more work in forming these storage shed slabs than there is in pouring them or finishing them, I think. You know, just the 2x12 form, setting up the shelf. You can see the excavators helping us out a little bit, moving all that rebar over to the next one, getting it a lot closer for us. The excavators here, you know, the guys who did the gravel, they did a really good job grading these things, compacting them. So it, it really helped us when we went to form it. You know, there wasn't really any digging we had to do under the forms. And they had it pretty pretty much perfect. They have a, a really good laser that they use. And then to get these laid out, we actually, the excavator actually has a guy come in who has a like a satellite receiver so he just punches in the coordinates on the corners and he reads it from a satellite and it tells him right exactly where to put the pins for the corners and the same with down the sides like we had him go every 50 feet and give us the exact coordinates for those too so laying it out was pretty cool so now what we're doing is we're backing the truck in we got a crane on the back of the truck and we're going to lift that power trial up you can kind of see it being lifted there get it all cleaned up put them in the truck and that's it guys that's how we finish and how we saw one of these so thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video